How full should your pot be when you're distilling? That's the question we're talking about today, guys. Let's get stuck in. How's it going, chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse, and this is Still at the Channel, all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. How full should you fill your pot when you're distilling? This sounds like a super simple question. And if you've been doing this for any length of time, it kind of is. But uh, for new distillers, it can be a little bit of a tricky thing to get your head around. It can be a little bit tricky to know what you can do, what you can't do. So that's what we're talking about today, guys. In essence, there's a pretty simple answer to this. Don't fill it too much because it's going to puke. It's going to boil over, potentially, depending on what you've got in the still. Uh, I'm not going to focus on that today because we just did a video about that a little while ago. I'll stick a card up here. You can click on it and uh, go check that out if that's what you're worried about. On the flip side of things, you need to be careful not to fill it too little. If you fill it too little, uh, well, you can run into some problems as well. Obviously, because we're taking product out of the other end of the still, you know, we're taking little jars like these or straight into one jar, whatever. There's, there's something coming out the other end of the still. That means your pot, your boiler, whatever you want to call it, is going to be less full, obviously, at the end of a run than at the beginning of the run. Now, the main issue here, guys, is if you're running electric elements in full contact, like just naked, inside your boiler, inside your pot, you do not want those things to become dry. Depending on the exact elements you have and the setup you've got, so on and so forth, you can actually burn the elements out, that's not great. Uh, it's also not, it's not so much of a big issue when you're heating the still from the outside or with uh, an element underneath, like the T500 or the, you know, copperhead, those sort of things. But at the same time, I don't know, I just, I just feel like it's not a great idea to run these things dry. So, how much do you need and, um, when you get yourself in a sticky situation, how do you get out of it, basically? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you the way I think about it and the way I calculate how low I can fill my boiler uh, at any one time with any one wash. And this is not exact math, it's an approximation. Uh, it's full of errors, but I build some sort of safety into it so that, yeah, so that I know I'm gonna be good. So the first step, the first step you wanna do is figure out your minimum level in the still at the end of distillation don't worry about the fill level at the moment at the end of distillation when you've run it down to its lowest point during that run how much liquid still needs to be in the pot at that point in time i can't tell you that you're gonna have to figure that out yourself uh, obviously if you've got something that's got you know graduations on the inside or whatever it's easy to look up uh, if you don't have that on the inside of your pot literally measure out you know, a gallon of water or a liter of water at a time, keep tipping it into your still, count the amount of liquid that's going in there uh, until you've got, I mean, I like to get about an inch of clearance, at least, you know, as a sort of a safety policy here over the top of your element. So once you've got that number, you know what that minimum is. So let's say uh, my elements are sitting here and I fill it up and I get to about, and my still on my one over there, the, the big one, it's about 15 liters is where I feel really comfortable. I can probably push it to about 12 if, I, uh, if I'm feeling lucky that day. <laughs> Next, you have to look at what you're gonna be putting into the still on that run. Now, this is where people sometimes forget that if the stuff going into the still is in higher ABV, that means you're gonna be taking more of it in terms of uh, gross volume, you're gonna be taking more out of that pot during the run. So if I put something into the still at 5% and it's 50 liters, you know, I'm gonna get very little out the other side at the end of the day, but if I put, you know, 35% into that still, the volume's gonna be much greater that I take out. Here's where my fudge maths comes in. I literally just calculate 100% uh, alcohol. So let's keep it um, super, super simple. Let's say we've got 20 liters that I'm gonna be putting into the still and I wanna know if I'm gonna run into problems at the end. I know that it is 10% alcohol. 10% of 20 is two liters and we're done. Not quite, because remember the product coming out the end of the still is not coming out at 100%, it's not gonna happen. So now I need to look at uh, what my expected ABV is going to be at the end of that entire run. And because of, like I said, the fudge factor, I aim on the lowest side. So for my setup over there, the 50 liter keg, which doesn't apply to you, I'm just giving you an example here. If it's 10% going in, I'm more than likely going to be doing a stripping run 
Uh, I'm going to be taking that down pretty low. That's just sort of how I roll with stripping runs. We're gonna go to about 20%. So if you like doing the math yourself, you can go ahead and do that. I'm not gonna explain it here because uh, if you're not the sort of person that just likes to figure it out and wants to do the math yourself, you can jump on over to the uh, Chase the Craft website and use the calculator there to, to figure out what volume you go from uh, two liters of 100% and what volume that's gonna be when it gets down to 20%. Does that make sense? <laughs> so just to recap, so my ranting is uh, guaranteed to make a little bit more sense, hopefully. Figure out your minimum level in the still that you ever wanna get down to. Figure out the volume that you're putting into the still and the ABV or the proof that it is. Have a guesstimate of what is gonna happen at the end of the run. You know, like the, the overall ABV, if you just collected everything into one jar, what the ABV of that jar would be, and then you can use that to calculate the rough volume that you've got. As long as the initial volume that you're putting into the pot minus the volume that's gonna be coming out is greater than your minimal level in the still, you're golden and you're good to go. But, 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 but. I hear you say, uh, you are going to run into situations where uh, either you don't have enough or you're sitting right on the edge and you're just not quite sure what to do. Now, the, uh, I guess the proper answer is to put it aside and wait, make more of whatever it is that you wanna put into your still, wait for another low wines from another stripping run, wait for more feints to, if you're doing a, or faints run or whatever, just you know, make more of what you've got so it's not gonna be a problem. Cool? I get it. Sometimes it's just not what you wanna do. I understand that. If you know you're pushing it, if you know you're pushing it, but you think you're gonna be okay, uh, what you can do is figure out how much liquid needs to come out before you start getting into trouble and just literally measure what's coming out. So if I'm taking product off the still, products going into the jar, I just monitor how much is coming out and as long as I have taken less than eight liters, I know I'm pretty good uh, and you know, if it's a stripping run for example, uh, maybe I stop at 25% because that's when I hit my eight liters rather than going right on down to the 20% that I normally. That doesn't sound like a good option for you? Okay, I get it. Uh, what you can do is just add some water in as well. So let's say that if you do that calculation and you figure you're gonna be short, by about two liters, maybe add two and a half liters in, add three liters in, and that's gonna add a little bit of a buffer zone to make sure you don't run down to that level that's gonna start causing problems for you. Just be aware that there is some uh, trade-off when you do that. Obviously, you're lowering the ABV of the product that's in the still. It's gonna drop the ABV in the boiler. If you're running a pot still, it's gonna drop your ABV of the, uh, the off-take. It's going to potentially, potentially, depending on what it is and how you do it, uh, perhaps give you less flavor carryover as well, especially if you're doing it in big volume. So like if you had a big ass still and you put 50 liters in and you're a little bit sketchy about that and you put another five liters in, it's, I mean, it's not a huge thing, right? But if I'm trying to put four liters of uh, something into my still and I've got to put you know, 10 liters in on top of it to get that through the whole run, that's gonna have a really big effect. So I would suggest um, putting a little bit of water in just to give yourself some safety. I, I've done that from time to time and I don't see a huge issue with it, but you, it, it's a scalpel, not a hammer in that situation. And lastly, and lastly, uh, if you have the luxury of having multiple stills, think about using a different still. So there's been plenty of times where I planned on putting something through, you know, through the, the 50 liter keg twice, and then I ended up deciding that, eh, I can't be bothered making another wash, or um, this is just a test, I just want to try it. So I put it through the 50 liter still first, and then moved down to the little Chinese pot still, or whatever it happens to be. But I get that's a, a luxury that I'm allowed because I'm doing this every day and, and because of the channel, so on and so forth. So that doesn't apply to everyone. I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much, Patreons, for helping me out. I don't get to do this stuff without you. So I, I really do appreciate it. I know I say it every week, multiple times, but I really do appreciate it. Thank you guys. For the rest of you out there, if you're finding value in these videos and you would like to contribute directly to the channel, you can go to chasethecraft.com slash support to figure out all the different ways that you can help out. One of them being, if it's right for you, of course, Patreon. So I hope that made sense, team. I hope that uh, covered off my thoughts on how to get around this issue and what the issue actually is. I know it seems like something super basic to people that have been doing this for a long time. But I'm, um, I'm seeing a lot of these new distiller questions popping up and 
it's nice to just have them documented in a video so people can find them by themselves. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it so much when people that are new to a hobby do some finger work and Google themselves and, uh, you know, training themselves to be self-sufficient. So if I give you the tools to do it, hopefully it helps you out. If it did help you out, it would be really awesome if you gave me a thumbs up in the, uh, down here below the video. Click the thumbs up, that helps me up a whole lot. While you're down there, you can also click the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, that helps me out even more. And I would thoroughly, thoroughly appreciate it. For you, it's free. And it means that you won't miss out on any more of these videos when I put them out. All right, guys, keep on chasing the craft. Stay classy. I'll see you next time. See ya.